Now, before we go any further in this video, we're gonna do a review of safety. Now, I know you're rolling your eyes and you're thinking, I already had that lecture, it was in high school shop class. Well, you're gonna get it again, because this stuff is important. It's, you know, it's really easy for people to just get into bad habits, or we're in a rush and then because of that an accident happens. And you know what, you can't even call it an accident because it's completely preventable. So uh, here's just a review of what you want to do in terms of safety for pretty much any project and then a couple of things that are very specific to working on an electric motorcycle. Uh, just for starters, uh, eye and ear protection. Uh, safety glasses are, are basically just put them on, wear them all the time. Um, your eyes are too important not to take care of. Uh, likewise, for your hearing, anytime you're working with uh, saws, grinders, anything like that, any kind of uh, loud, sustained noise, uh, you're, you're going to want some hearing protection, whether it's those small, soft earplugs or these more, uh, the hard ear muff style. I kind of like these because they're easy to put on and take off, whereas the earplugs, you usually just kind of put them in and leave them in. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is you always want to have your sources of energy disconnected. Typically that means you never have the batteries connected to the motorcycle when you're working on it, period. Uh, that's especially important if you're doing any kind of uh, cutting wires or anything like that. So don't go poking tools around uh, anywhere near any sort of uh, working energy. If you're the type of person who has a big keychain, keeps it clipped onto their belt loop the way I do, uh, get rid of it. Leave them not on you where they're not going to hang down into any battery terminals, anything along those lines. Hand protection is also important. Help keep you from uh, getting cut up, um, just cuts, bruises, abrasions. When I'm normally working, I usually like a regular mechanics glove. Um, it really doesn't reduce the dexterity any. Um, it, it, it protects you from minor cuts, grime, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're doing anything heavier, um, any kind of cutting, things like that, a heavy leather glove is a very nice way to go. And of course, if you're doing any welding, uh, welding gloves, welding helmets are a requirement. In general, long pants, long sleeve shirt, um, you want your clothing to cover your body and be able to protect you. Here's another little trick to keep in mind. On a multimeter like this, you can measure voltage or amperage, and the difference is you move one of the cables physically on here, because when you measure current, uh, you measure it going through the device, and when you're measuring voltage, you're measuring uh, the difference across two wires. Uh, the thing you have to keep in mind is it doesn't matter where this dial is, it just matters where that cable is. So one time I was going back and forth between measuring uh, voltage and current, um, I had changed this dial, I forgot to switch the one cable back, so I went to measure voltage, however, the power was then short-circuited right through this thing, and basically it uh, vaporized the tip of the probes here, which uh, made a great big spark and it scared the bejesus out of me, so that's a uh, unique little safety thing that I came across one time. Now there are a couple other things that uh, are of particular interest with an electric motorcycle. You may want to lift your motorcycle up just so it's more ergonomic to work on. Uh, you may have a motorcycle lift or you may have some sort of a, a small but sturdy workbench that uh, you and a friend could lift it up onto and leave it there for working. Uh, however, a motorcycle could easily tip off of there. So if you're on any sort of an elevated workbench or a lift or anything, make sure to use some sort of a ratchet strap or a tie down so that uh, for whatever reason, if the weight shifts, the entire motorcycle is not going to tip over. Uh, that also includes just it being on the kickstand. If you've got a heavy motorcycle on just the side stand, um, be careful not to let kids play around there. Um, while you're working on the motorcycle, the, the weight may be a little bit different than it is typically. So uh, keep children and pets out of your work area and keep in mind um, the weight and the balance of your motorcycle. Another thing to watch out for is a wedding ring or other jewelry. Rings are typically made out of gold, which is highly conductive, and it's on your hands, which is what you're working with. So either take it off or as a bare minimum, cover it up. Any other kind of jewelry as well, either take it off or uh, at least have it tucked away so that it doesn't have the possibility of either conducting electricity or getting caught on something. So just a couple more things on the motorcycle itself. A chain guard. You're going to need one because if you're not using the original transmission on the motorcycle, which includes a front cover for the chain guard, 
around the drive sprocket, you're going to have to make one yourself. I made this one out of plexiglass so that I could show off how the motorcycle works while also keeping fingers, toes, and dirt out of there. Now, if you change the rear sprocket, you might also have to modify the chain guard back here just a bit. You might have to space it out or potentially even make a custom one. In this case, all I had to do was bend it out just a little teeny tiny bit and it was fine. The big thing is when you're working on the motorcycle, watch where your fingers are. I was actually working on the motorcycle. I didn't have any batteries hooked up to it whatsoever, but I was testing the alignment between the back sprocket and the drive sprocket by having the motorcycle up on the double kickstand. I was moving the back wheel and I wasn't watching where my other finger was. I got my finger pinched between the drive sprocket and the chain. This was just turning the back wheel by hand, no electric power whatsoever, and it was the second most painful experience in my life. Now, if a person got a finger in there while it was driven by the motor, it would be instant amputation. This is serious stuff. You gotta be careful while working on your projects. So keep that in mind. Now, here's just one more bit of safety advice before you get started on your project. A typical wrench is an excellent way to short circuit the two power posts on a battery. We don't want to do that. So what I did was I took the wrenches that I'd be using specifically for the batteries and I insulated them with heat shrink. Uh, in the case of these two wrenches, this was for a different electric vehicle project and the 9 16th fit the positive side of the batteries and the half inch fit the negative side. So not only did I shrink wrap them, but I also color coded them, making it easy to know which wrench to use. Now here's just a plain old wrench, but if we take some heat shrink tubing, cut it to a little bit longer than the length of the wrench, we can slide it inside and still have a little bit of room to fold over the end. Then all we have to do is hit that with a little bit of heat. So there we go, now we have a wrench that is uh, much less likely to short circuit a battery. Um, you can do the same thing with your uh, socket wrenches or any other wrenches that you're going to be using near your batteries or electrical system. That's it for safety, let's get on to working on the project.